well, sun hasn't quite set, although we're not going to see it. We've caught up with the gorgeous Angama girls. And they are living up to their pride's name. And we are below Angama and our camp. And uh, Vim will show you in a second. We just want to see where they're going. Now, there were a lot of zebra, buffalo, warthog, heart beast, topi, impala, all in this area. And you can see... Not starving, but they could definitely do with a snack. A bit of scent marking. Now, what is that girl up there doing? She seems a bit more intent. Now, there could be some potential warthog holes around here. No, she's losing interest. We have buffalo down the valley. So there is a, literally a smorgasbord of snacks for a lion surrounding us at the moment. But there we go. Have a look up top. Oh, sorry, Vim. I'll say hello again. Oh, welcome back. Um, but have a look up top. There's the incredibly beautiful uh, final control. Uh, there we go. That's where Rebecca is sitting and talking to us from. But if we come to the left on the on the cliff face, uh, in probably one of the most spectacular spots in the whole world, uh, to sit and enjoy an afternoon beverage while looking over one of Africa's greatest wilderness areas, and that's North Camp of Angama Mara. And the Angama girls are hunting in the shadows. Janet's wondering, are lions seen up at the top of the hill around the camps? I know lions have been seen in Angama Mara before, uh, but generally not. Um, up and behind there is uh, Maasai land, and there's lots of uh, cattle and men in red shukas. And the lions of the Maasai Mara have learned that a red shuka is a very dangerous thing, and they tend to stay away. And uh, even seem to be, in certain cases, I've seen them look scared from the sound of a cowbell. Now, she's heard something. I also heard it. It sounded like Impala rutting in the direction uh, she is. I can't see anything just yet. This is ideal hunting weather. Uh, there's a nice strong breeze coming from the north, so they're hunting into the wind. And, uh, of course, cloud cover, so very little ambient light around, which will give them some of the best opportunities to possibly catch something. Now, of course, we found out this morning why the fourth lioness isn't with the pride so often. And that's because she's got three little monsters. And uh, they are, oh, I guess, about between five and six weeks old. And they haven't been introduced into the pride just yet. So that is very exciting. The Ngama pride has grown by three. There are now ten cubs, four adult lionesses. Oh, off she goes. We still still do have some of our rain covers on. And uh, it is quite uh, windy, rainy still. And we've got to keep the camera dry. And this is going to be really, really exciting. Lisa says, this mom's thinking about what's on the menu for tonight. Indeedy. Uh, yeah, so it is going to be quite interesting to see what they do so the most important time to be with lions on the hunt is from about now uh, sort of from a, an hour before sunset to two hours after sunset and uh, then again from about two hours before sunrise to an hour after sunrise hunting and of course when the migration comes it's just sort of pick a, a, a wildebeest at will but um, outside of that time they they do have their most success in those periods well these two girls are getting lazy uh, let me i can't see where the other one went just she went behind us i'm just gonna have a quick turn around <laughs> 